Hello, everybody. Turn this up in my headphones, Charles. You got it, Dylan. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another very exciting episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. I am your co-host, Charles, and with me today, as always, is my lifelong friend and co-host, Dylan. I'm ready to talk some fantasy with my friend here, Charles. Oh, I'm ready to talk some fantasy with my friend too, man. Today's the day. Here's the moment we are in. It's very exciting. We're doing it. And not only are we doing it, but we are making it a very Denna episode. <laughs> what could be better? <laughs> well, you're preaching to the choir with that one, Charles. <laughs> it's been a long time since we finished our buddy read of the King Killer Chronicles, and we've just we feel like there's so much that we need to say and so much that we need to repeat to all the fans out there about King Killer. It's been too long. <laughs> Well, Charles, I love how you led with repeat. <laughs> it's like I my worry with this episode is it's going to be a rehash of my rant on Denna in the, the Name of the Wind episode, our, our Buddy Reed discussion of that book that came out a while back. And I, I just re-listened to that one to try to make sure that I don't repeat myself too much. And I also realized... At, at one point, I literally spoke for 10 minutes straight about defending Denna, so I'll, I'll try not to rehash that <laughs> no, here. I, I, I like to see the passion. I feel like the King Killer Chronicles, for us, is one of the books that we have the most passionate opinions about that we've in for the sure. books that we've covered so far, and it's certainly one of the most passionately discussed in the world of fantasy, online anyway, in the communities that we try to be a part of, so... Um, we thought, you know, th- it's time to t- talk more about King Killer, and it's time to focus on one of the more talked about characters. A- and the name of this episode is "In Defense of Denna." No surprise to anybody that has listened to the show, uh, especially those last King Killer episodes, that we are um, pro Denna, and we just wanted to take a moment to dedicate. Um, ourselves to this discussion of why we are pro Denna and kind of share our point of view not to say that we're obviously objectively right or anything but this just this is what we feel this is the opinion that we wanted to make sure was heard throughout the internet communities out there in the fantasy world i appreciate you saying all of that charles <laughs> i definitely before i start uh screeching over here about <laughs> how <laughs> Dead as a good character. I definitely, while I'm still composed, want to say <laughs> uh, exactly what you were saying, Charles. We're not trying to claim that any of this is objectively right. We just both subjectively really like Denna as a character. We really like the King Killer Chronicle as a series. And I, I think this is aptly named in defense of Denna because it, it does feel feel like to me at least with the dominant feelings on our fantasy and a lot of these other communities that we try to get involved with whenever we can that talk fantasy Mm -hmm. charles it feels like you're automatically on the defense (laughs) when you're (laughs) talking about a character like denna there's so much hate that goes her way that it's like no, it's just us talking here, Charles, and we're both pro Denna, so yes. it's interesting that it already feels like we're on the defense. <laughs> right. It, it's a nice little vacuum that we can kind of share our opinions on, a- and then um, feel free to um, share your thoughts after you've heard this episode on social media at the FTF Podcast or the FTF Podcast number one uh, on Twitter. So, um, yeah, we're hoping to just kind of give our peace in this nice condensed episode summarize everything we wanted to talk about about Denna if such a thing is possible and uh, put it out there in the world 
definitely. And I think the the best place to start here, Charles, is that quote from Patrick Rothfuss that I read on our Name of the Wind episode. But in case you haven't heard that, or even if you have, I think it's just great to hear it again to frame this conversation, is Patrick Rothfuss said, some days I feel like Denna is the best character I've ever written because different people feel different ways about her and they can justify their beliefs with passages from the text. Some days I feel like Denna is my greatest failure as an author because I haven't brought her to you as clearly as I sometimes wish to. Some days I just really want a donut. Very Patrick Rothfussian of him. <laughs> Very true. Um, and yeah, for sure. I, I think, you know, it's been a while since there's been any news on when this third book's coming out and Rothfuss hasn't really been commenting on it. He's been radio silent. And I think just all of these kind of opinions have been stewing for so long. And now people are more and more starting to express um their least favorite parts of the book. And I think now it's just almost become the, the, the popular opinion amongst people sharing thoughts um, on on the internet. And it's like Roth has said, it's like people are so charged about Denna and is that a good thing or a bad thing? Did I write her well or not? And uh, Dylan, do you want to go ahead and let's start with our start with our discussion, sharing some of our thoughts. I feel like you're the champion of our, of our Denna discussions. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, I am out there on, on social media and stuff like that, trying to politely engage in a, a conversation about Denna. It is our top rated Reddit comment of all time. Charles uh, wow. <laughs> on the FDF podcast account is defending Denna uh, with 236 upvotes. I'm very proud that sitting, if you search by top on the FDF podcast Reddit account, I'm very proud that a comment in favor of Denna has <laughs> been able to reach that for us. Uh, so, yeah, I'm out there defending, uh, for the record, it, it, that was only able to become a top comment for us because it was in response to a thread that asked who, who's a character you love that everyone else hates and I <laughs> responded with I love Denna and unlike Quoth I'm not afraid to say it before Got I him. went in <laughs> yeah <laughs> before I went in on uh, some of my opinions but I I do think Charles that a, another important way to frame a conversation about Denna that I've been thinking about and this was inspired by one of our, our friends on, on Twitter who said that uh, Denna is uh, a good character, but not a great person. I'm paraphrasing that. And I think that's something that people tend to conflate when it should be distinguished is that uh, people are uh, oftentimes just leveling these broad critiques at Denna, and this makes her a bad character, when sometimes they're just feeling like she's a person they don't like or wouldn't want to spend time with or be <laughs> friends with or whatever. And it's interesting. A lot of that does get thrown on her when it's like, I don't see that getting thrown on, let's say, a Glockta from <laughs> Abercrombie's first law series, who's a uh, he's a torturer and does some really messed up things. Uh, I won't spoil right. any of that. And, uh, but from the start, he's a torturer. And people, I don't feel like there's lots of people who feel like they want to be friends with or like Glockta as a person. But people seem to be able to say, well, but he's a great character, which he is. I mean, J.R. Percrombie, well, it's awesome character. <laughs> right. So I feel like Denna, for some reason, there's this like, I think she's fickle and flaky and unreliable. It's like, so does Rothfuss. <laughs> it's like, uh, and I think that that's part of who she is. And she's a really realistically written character for a teenager in that world. Um, and she has a lot of positive and redeeming qualities, I think, as well. And like real people, flaws. And I think that's part of what makes her a good character. 
That's so true. The distinction between character as a character in a book and her personality is an important one. And I feel like a lot of the reason King Killer Chronicles specifically is so controversial is that that distinction between the character and the personality is so blurred just in the way that Rothfuss chooses to tell the story. Right. Even with Quoth, who's also a very controversial character in the books, uh, in, in the popular conversation about these books, is because, you know, people don't like that he's so smug and overconfident and seemingly good at everything. But it's like his personality is someone who would like oversell his story and his arrogance is actually what makes him disliked by everyone in the actual book that he, that he's that he's dealing with. So Rothfuss is very unique in when he writes fantasy about how he portrays his characters and like the you kind of sometimes when you're reading forget that sense of perspective and it's easy to kind of blur the lines between character and personality but you're like oh I see what Rothfuss is doing here he's not letting us behind the curtain of Denna at all. And we only get these fleeting glimpses of her from a very biased perspective. And like many discerning readers need to kind of unpack that a bit. It's like, okay, does that make her good or not? Does that make her a good character or not? And I think a lot of people are in love with that idea. And some people are like, it's just kind of not for me, kind of frustrating, honestly. And I think that's what creates such an intense debate amongst a lot of different discussions about King Killer. Well said, Charles. Yeah, I I think I talked some about how I get pretty strong feelings while reading those chapters, some of which are frustration, some of which are feeling sad and uh, almost grief for what feels like a doomed relationship between Quoth and uh, Denna, given that we know where Quoth ends up in the frame story. Uh, almost, yeah, almost grief. And I th- I feel like all of those negative emotions that I'm feeling while I'm reading this are part of what makes Denna and her relationship with Quoth so good for me like right. it makes me feel so strong and that's what Rothfuss <laughs> is getting at like it makes me feel so strongly and I could say hey this makes me feel in a way I don't like to feel I don't like to feel frustrated um, and say that makes her bad or I can say wow this character is eliciting such a reaction out of me and in a way that Rothfuss intends her to that I, I feel like it's good. A hundred percent, you know. I, I think that's why a lot of people that like this Denna Quoth relationship are defending Denna in a lot of cases. It's, it's this it's this this awkward start stop courtship that from this reader's perspective you almost pull your hair out. It's like you guys are clearly into each other, like just you know, tell each other already. But it's so painfully like awkward and there's so much insecurity going on between Quoth and Denna that's not like expressed directly in the narrative but it's just what it's what happens as as Rothfuss is writing it and that can either come off as frustrating or for some people it can like people can relate to it as we've mentioned on our show before it's like it's a relatable relationship and in that case we actually have very strong emotions when we see it so honestly portrayed and Rothfuss just commits to it throughout two very long books like Denna pops in and pops out exactly and it's always awkward and it's always this insecurity and it's always kind of frustrating and Like, even Rothfuss himself kind of makes fun of that. In the second book, when Quoth sees a similar relationship, he's like, why don't they just tell them they're in love already? And then then it's (laughs) Tempe's like, no, to tell them that would be like trying to put out fire with your bare hands. You know, it's like, it's not worth, it's not worth the trouble. And even Quoth doesn't understand it when it's happening to him. So Rothfuss's commitment to that over two books is uh, such a unique relationship in fantasy that I've read so far and it's one that I can relate to in some ways and and I respect so much his ability to not be like but they were too insecure and so much was left unsaid between them it's like no he's he's playing it out and then she leaves and come back so for some readers it's like oh here we go another Dennis scene where nothing's gonna happen it's gonna be annoying but for some people it's like oh no like I got that 
lump in my throat again. Here we go. So it's just, um, it, to me, it's what makes Denna worth defending. I mean, it's such a great, <laughs> honest portrayal of a relationship, and it doesn't need to be explicitly laid out how awkward it is at all. Charles, you make such great points there, and it reminds me of, of two things that I want to talk about, one of which is that there's a whole nother level of ways people criticize Denna that you seem to be touching on, which is more as like what she brings out in Quoth, like criticism of Denna but via I don't like how Quoth acts around <laughs> Denna. <laughs> and we could we can talk more about that for sure. And then there's this other piece you're bringing up about people who can relate to the way it's difficult for Quoth to interact with Denna or just uh, like someone like Denna can be frustrating to uh, deal with. And even when I was preparing for this episode, I was seeing people, I was trying to see, okay, what is it that people are saying? If I'm going to defend Denna, I should get an idea what I'm defending her against. And a pretty surprising number of the criticisms of Denna were she reminds me of like <laughs> someone I knew in college who was like this and like that. And it does feel like, okay, well, that's a critique of her as a person. Maybe you don't like those qualities, but not necessarily something that makes her a bad character that she reminds you of some. In fact, maybe she's pretty realistic of a yeah. character if she reminds so many people of people they know. Right, she's like such a relatable character that people can transfer their complicated feelings towards what it reminds them of onto Denna as a character. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And Charles, I I do want to talk some about this criticism of Denna and what she brings out in Quoth. All right. So I usually see that framed in this uh <laughs> there's basically two ways and they seem pretty opposite of each other some people f seem to feel that qu when denna is around quoth it brings out this insecure annoying sappy side of quoth that takes away from this person who is so good at everything so then they don't like to see him floundering with someone right and then it seems like the other side is that some people see denna as representing someone who is just there to show how great quoth is because she's described by quoth <laughs> let's be frank here uh as so perfect in every way and it's just this other moment of, oh, of course, Quoth as so, like someone who's so great at everything has the most perfect love interest. Yeah. And it feels like as she's taken these, people are firing shots at her from both angles here. But we know from Beth that she has, was it a crooked nose? A crooked nose. Yeah. <laughs> but she does have great, uh, what does uh, Beth say? That Little she has ears or ears? Ears? something? Perfect. Oh, ears, perfect ears? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, there you go uh yeah no i agree i feel like people when they see quoth and denna together they they're kind of they they see that quoth is acting differently and they can be kind of annoying and then you kind of transfer that like when to when quoth is just fixated on this denna person and you've spent so much time with quoth you're like can we just move on from this i don't like who you are when you're around her which is what all of his friends are like that will is like okay have we done enough for this chick yet can we please move on like how much longer does it have to be that we have to put up with this so again like rothfuss's willingness to commit to that it is definitely irks people but it also rings out so honestly for her personality it's like we don't like who quoth is necessarily when he's with her but that's not necessarily her fault and that's not necessarily um something we need to fixate on denna about it's just the nature of quoth as a person in his relationship and denna as a person and when they're together so a super interesting uh dynamic there i will also say that like 
a part of what makes Dennis so annoying is the fact that where everything is told through Quoth's perspective and Quoth is the main character. I feel like what Rothfuss is playing towards is that we're we're learning more and more about Denna and the story would be totally different if told from Denna's perspective. That's just kind of the feeling that I'm getting from all of this. So I definitely think Denna does not benefit from just randomly popping up in Quoth's life and being annoying and disappearing, but there's something going on there that um, I think fans kind of want to see more of, or maybe, you know, we're wishing there was more of, but that's just not what Quoth gets to see and gets to interact and gets to feel. So I think that's a huge part of it as well. Well, this is a, a classic thing that defenders of Denna often go to, I think, which is mm-hmm. that we are in Quoth's point of view. Yeah. And, we see Den as this person who Quoth is searching for all the time and just, as you say, Charles pops in and out of Quoth's life. But we're, I mean, I was keeping track of this during our read of, buddy. our buddy read of the King Killer Chronicle because I knew to look out for it, having already <laughs> read the books and seen all the conversation on it. And if if any of our listeners do go back and, and read this, keep an eye on how frequently it is Denna that finds Quoth and not vice versa. She is constantly tracking down Quoth. I would say that she finds Quoth much more often than he finds her. And there's also lines where she explicitly says that she has trouble finding him and is looking for him constantly. So I think... It's very easy for us from Quoth's point of view to see Denna in a certain way where she's the one that can never be found. But yeah, if this book was written from Denna's point of view, we might all really feel that way about Quoth. Exactly, because we're largely in the dark about who Denna is. And I think the fact that she's this mystery while also being this like, well, they won't, they love interest makes it harder to empathize with her but if you look at what's going on and what Rothfuss is is showing and not showing and and like you said like how many times is Denna actually the one that finds Quoth it's like her her personality is definitely more complex when you look at the bigger picture and kind of get outside of Quoth's perspective it's like yeah she is kind of tracking him down and and she is doing all these things and and Quoth the one is is the one sometimes it's not reciprocating and and so it's easy to, from Quoth's perspective, from what little we know about Denna, to kind of write her off. But I think what a lot of Denna fans do enjoy about her is kind of this mystery, as well as this honest portrayal of a of an awkward relationship. So that's why I'm all on board, and I'm like super excited to see where it goes. And I have a feeling what Denna's been doing on her downtime when she's not awkwardly flirting with Quoth <laughs> is going to be something that we're going to learn more about in, in the final chapter here if we ever get it. And I'm super excited to to see how it all comes together because Rothfuss has been so committed to keeping us in the dark on this. Frustrating to some people, but like still very exciting to see where it goes. I agree with you, Charles, and I'll say what you're saying now has a little bit of a feel of like, oh, are we winding down here? But Charles, I'm not I'm not ready. I'm not ready to wind down. I've got more. So I'm not gonna stop you, man. We're here to defend Dana however long it takes. We gotta do it. This is our piece. So, yeah. I mean I first off, like you were saying before, Charles this this stuff about what Dana's doing and her downtime i think some of what she's doing is stuff that is is really pretty nice stuff like she she is clearly trying to help um this is a little more defending den as a person than as a character Mm -hmm. but she is trying to help people we do get a glimpse into that in in book two yeah where where she she, like takes that girl off the streets and feeds her and gives her advice and exactly and she does buy quoth the most expensive thing that he owns yeah the case and gifts that to him the loot case so she 
I think people frame her often as this very manipulative person who just uses people. And maybe we will get some reveal in book three where it turns out she was doing all of that. But <laughs> I don't think we can say that with confidence two books in. She does do a lot of things that are kind and helpful. But of course, she has plenty of, of flaws too. And yeah, I, I want to double down, Charles, as you talk about these awkward... Uh, <laughs> awkward interactions between Denna and Quoth. They right. are teenagers. They are yes, teenagers. Yes. Let's stop and think about that for a little bit. <laughs> like, Charles, we knew each other as teenagers. For uh, sure. We, <laughs> and we know we can both relate to how awkward and bumbling these interactions with someone <laughs> that uh, you have a crush on can be at that age. And I think uh, yeah, part of what makes these painful to relive, but part of what makes these such uh, well-written interactions. A hundred percent. It's it's going back to like the relationship and what makes it so relatable. And also, like Quoth, for the longest part, is like his Achilles heel has kind of been interacting with women. You know, his social cues around women aren't aren't that strong from like a from like a relationship perspective and you know he, he kind of doesn't know what to do with Denna for a long time and in and, and all those things um one of the rare moments of vulnerability for Quoth's character especially in the beginning because there's a whole other conversation we could have about Quoth being a Mary Sue and all this that and the other thing but certainly one of his vulnerabilities is is Denna and a larger picture how he has um more meaningful relationships with people, especially with women. And it's kind of telling to his character, all very honest, um, interesting things that Rothfuss does. And look, I mean, do you want another like love story where they get together and all this other stuff? Or do you want like a, like a dynamic, ongoing, complicated, largely platonic thing that, you know, it's just interesting and it's different and it's real. And that's what I keep coming back to when I'm defending Denna. It's like, it's a different, honest portrayal of a character. Like, come on, what more do you want? Do you want the same thing over and over? Rothfuss doesn't is clearly committed to not doing that. So, for sure. I mean, i I think it's very valid to want this traditional. Will they? Won't they? But they do in the end, and yeah. we get the sense that they very much will. And they'll always choose each other when push comes to shove. It's okay to want that for sure, right? It's You're when not Quoth that. learned to love that he finally was able to tap into his uh, hidden powers and save the day. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> so, you, and those relationships are all over the place in fantasy and beyond. So you can find many of those. And if you want to, keep, keep going, right? Keep For reading sure. more books with those kind of romances in them. But... I think for people like you and me, at least, Charles, who feel like we've had enough portrayals of that and we want something different, it's amazing to have a relationship like Denna and Quoth's that feels different and true. For sure. And props to Rothfuss for committing to that in the face of like frustrating people. It's like, well, this is the story. This is how it plays out. And buckle down because I wrote a whole second book that does it again so it's you know it's it's um for lack of a better word brave for for an author to kind of double down on that on those controversies just because that he knows he's being honest to the relationship and to the characters and i'm sure it will have an effect a large effect on the plot as it as it continues and all of those things definitely well charles i'm, I'm feeling that we got most of what we wanted to get out there well i want to make sure point. you we, oh. we've said all of our pieces and you know you're kind of like the the gatekeeper on our on our hot denna topics uh is there anything we still need to get into well i do want to push back against all the negative connotations Let's that come it. up with gatekeeper but <laughs> <laughs> you know charles and i don't gatekeep on here um no we, and like we said at the top before we riled ourselves up this is just our um what were the words we said? It's like, look, this is just our <laughs> subjective, subjective opinions. opinions. And 
we totally understand and respect the opposite end uh, <laughs> of, of those opinions. Well, this is just where we're coming from. And, and we enjoy the discourse. It, it's always we fun do. to talk about Denna in a uh, safe space. All differences of opinions are always good. Yeah. No, we we love to hear it, and we're very accepting of all that. My, the only last thing I think we didn't uh, address, Charles, that I see people making a lot of noise about why they don't like Denna is because they think that other characters in the books would be more interesting love interests. And a lot of people oh, say yeah. Devi, and I see Fella sometimes, Ari. But Devi seems to come up the most. I I'm like wondering Devi. if you have any thoughts on this. <laughs> Devi is the loan shark, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I always liked Devi. I would, you know, there is a bit of flirtation amongst them. I mean, as far as Devi being like, you know, if you ever wanted to knock boost, just come back and hit me up. So <laughs> it's like uh, um, interesting Very in those respects. Different from Denna. Yes. And um, Quoth is just kind of like, Wada like uh I gotta go by and runs out the door so it's um interesting and I always like that she was kind of left the school but is very capable kind of follows along the same arc as as Quoth seemed to follow and so I can see that I also liked what was the name of the girl that or the woman that he saves from the fire in Fela. Fela Fela yeah I liked her too so it's like Rothbus writes a whole bunch of good characters and there's so many possibilities with all of these characters and uh ultimately you can't walk away from Denna for whatever reason and and that's what makes it so much uh, uh juicier I would say <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I I don't have tons of takes per se on this like <laughs> Would other characters be more interesting love interests for Quoth uh, thing? That's part of why I threw that to you, Charles. I just <laughs> see it all the time. I, I really like the... I think, sure, could Rothfuss write an interesting novel focused on Quoth and Davy uh, interacting? Sure. Yeah, I, right? Right. But I guess I like the Denna-Quoth interaction so much that I'm reticent to say that I would want anything different. Um, I'm in yeah, the same so boat. Much I'm in the same yeah. boat. I, I think you know, people are right in that it would be interesting and I wouldn't mind seeing it, but I think Quoth has to just keep going. with. We have to see where this Denna thing is going to go. Yeah. <laughs> and I would rather see that than just see him casually dating someone that's interesting and cool. You know, it's like, like good that you have a girlfriend, but what about this complicated mess over here? Like, this was what we need to see play out, you know? So that's just from my point. That's where I'm coming from. For sure. What we want for Quoth as a character that we're interested in reading about is very different from what we'd want from one, for one of our friends. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like yeah, friends yeah like, like, dude, okay. she has her own small business. She's making lots of money. <laughs> she seems very talented. She's obviously into you. What's the issue here? That other chick is like you know, flaky. She's always, you know, with other people, pursuing patrons, doing her own thing. You need someone stable, you know? I could see that for sure. I could see myself pushing that on people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we won't push that here because we're too focused on defending Denna. And I think if you, Charles, sounds like you're feeling good on where where you're at. I'm feeling good for now on uh, <laughs> where I'm at. I just want to make with... sure we covered all the bases. Like when I said you were the gatekeeper, it only meant that you had all of our ideas written down. I just want to make sure we missed anything. Not that you were the gatekeeper of any opinions, <laughs> but you were the gatekeeper of our notes on the episode. <laughs> I, yes, I feel the same, Charles. I knew where you're coming from and just wanted to make sure our listeners heard Because we do uh, take notes, we do prepare for these discussions, believe it or not, we formulate our opinions <laughs> beforehand. And especially when it comes to defending Denna, we don't want to leave any stones unturned. If we're coming out dedicating an episode in defense of Denna, we want to make sure that we have defended her to the best of our abilities. And I think we've certainly done enough. I just don't want to um, leave anything that we prepared unsaid. Gotcha. Well, I'll leave everyone with a a quote Ooh. then, Charles from King Killer, which is, 
Anyone can love a thing because. That's as easy as putting a penny in your pocket. But to love a thing despite, to know the flaws and love them too, that is rare and pure and perfect. And I want to invite y'all to try to love Denna despite. That is so beautiful. Rothfuss has such a way with words. And I can't think of a better way to end this, guys. You know, the heart wants what the heart wants. (laughs) All right. So with that very thoughtful quote from uh, Rothfuss, I will bring us into the outro. Thank you, everybody, for listening to us yet again come to the defense of Denna as written in the King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. If you feel differently about Denna, we'd love to hear it and talk about it. We think you are right and valid, and we would love to pursue that discourse. So be sure to hit us up on social media. We are the FTF Podcast, and we are the FTF Podcast with a number one for Twitter. Or send us an email at theftfpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, looking forward to chat with anyone. And yeah, yeah, throw us five stars if you liked it. If don't, give us some feedback on how we can improve. We're always looking to improve over here. That's exactly right. You know, we're always looking to improve. We're always looking at dialogues. And we really love the uh, King Killer community. So thank you, everybody, for listening. As always, go forth and conquer, friends. <laughs>